everyone. Hi, my name is Courtney Terry from McMinnville Public Library, and we're here for a library after dark, which is a special event we have after hours. Hi, I'm Teresa O'Neill. I'm at the McMinnville Library, and I wrote a book about old time vaginas and the people who own them. Um, it's funny. It has pictures. Um, and it's very clean, considering. Thank you all for coming this evening. Uh, without further ado, I will turn it over. Um, please, we do have books for sale, um, courtesy of Third Street Books. So if you would like to purchase one, just come and see me after the presentation. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And it's okay. I'm not one of those people to get bent out of shape if there's a cell phone going off. But if you do answer it, I do reserve the right to shout penis really loud. <laughs> over and over and over again. Shall I, I, I can, we can wait. All right. Okay. Now, hi. Um, my name is Teresa. I wrote this book, Unmentionable, The Victorian Lady's Guide to Sex, Marriage, and Manners. Uh, tonight, since the theme is After Dark, I uh, was requested to go naughty, which is hard because my book is actually quite proper, and I'm proud of that. I wrote it so that my 85-year-old uh, Seventh-day Adventist dean from Academy could read it. She's a lady with a capital L from the South, even, and so that the angriest feminist riot girl lesbian to read it too. And uh, I'm proud of that. So, but I'm still going to have a couple pictures of the Kama Sutra. You just need some things you can't avoid. So, like I said, sex, marriage, and we'll do a quick uh, birth control thing at the end because everybody's always curious. Um, my book takes the conceit that we are time traveling. My narrator, who is way cooler than me, is taking you back in time and walking you through the ins and outs of actual life for women in this century. Um, and at this point, I will have told you how to make yourself husband-worthy, how to menstruate in such a manner as to please God and nature, and, and which poisons make the best mustache removers. And so now you're married, your wedding night is before you, and this is, this is you. An 83-year-old cloistered nun still knows more than you're supposed to know about a woman's sexuality. So, for instance, take the riddle of the vagina. I love this picture. They set up the female reproductive system as if it were the male reproductive oh, system. No. And actually, you can see there's a tiny little embarrassed homunculi baby in there in the womb oh, on, on the right. Homunculi. Unfortunately, the science of 1841 has no idea how the miracle of life is going on. <laughs> in layman's terms, a lady takes the fecundating secretions that is conveyed out of a man into her tube with peculiar powers. <laughs> and then, um, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, the fearsome excretion finds its way to the female receptacle, which is an organ bag in her belly. And then, we're not quite sure, but asking a Victorian woman to violate a lifetime of shushed modesty and pollute her most innocent creation with the news that things are about to get real. Well, it must have been excruciating. Who among us wants to be part of a conversation that starts, Remember, sweetheart, when we took Flossie to mate with the Gunderson's bull? And, um, and you thought he was killing her? Well, aren't you in for a surprise? <laughs> uh, yeah. So aside from foreknowledge, foreplay, and what, what other measures can be taken to ensure a pleasant wedding night experience? Now, this is important. Don't let him try to crunch you up into any weird, unnatural positions. <laughs> James Ashton doesn't want to see that peculiar tube of yours <laughs> curving in the wrong directions. <laughs> and then I got real helpful, and I got the Kama Sutra. <laughs> and I, I, no, that one's no, no, no. I can't tell what that one is, so maybe. That one's physically impossible. So forget about it. And there, there you go. Oh, she's gone, thank God. Not that you can really tell. Ah, I'm lying to myself. There, that's okay. I have, I, have, I have proof. 
All other positions are unnatural and unhealthy. I could illustrate this fact by several cases in point, but the details are too disgusting. <laughs> Upon your lips, you might say, now, how in the world would you presume to know that, sir? And there it will stay. He knows because he probably has seen an unhappy woman with female trouble and asked her what her sexual positions of late have been, and thereby made the obvious conclusion. That's called science D in this century to, to these men. It's not science at all, is it? Um, a woman who does not reach a state of play ecstasy during intercourse is not having her parts properly manipulated. Now, if you think this indicates a lack of clitoral stimulation, that is your second mistake. Your first is thinking about the clitoris at all, your tawdry, naughty thing. No, it is commonly known that the clitoral stimulation is no more than, and this is truly what they believe, an exterior irritation women must do their best to ignore. It's like this little vestigial penis that shouldn't even be there. <laughs> no, the seat of a female climax is most naturally the seat of life itself. It's her womb. I was like, no, I, I loved her face. So I was like, well, yeah, well, are you are you sure? <laughs> I, I don't want to I don't want to go against you, but are you are you sure? Um, of, of a larger story that I couldn't find the rest of, but it was captioned. Slow, I'll beat you yet. So I, I don't, I, yeah. I put my own <laughs> caption on. Yay, time to be the blessed receptacle of your manly potency again. Then I can kill a chicken and make you a sandwich with it. <laughs> fair. Is it fair? Oh, my sweet girl, what book have you been reading? That technically is the end of the reading, but people are always very curious about birth control, so I do a really quick little touch on that because and some of you are old enough to remember in 1960 a Dr. Snow invented the birth control pill. It works by birth control so I do a really quick little touch on that. Usually um, people are always very curious about birth control so I do a really quick little touch on that. So here we have Lysol. Yeah, this, see this germ killer? This was the sl this was slang for sperm in the old days. This was a douche. It was very and um, and it was put into here. Um, now this the reason this wouldn't work very well is because actually as we discussed earlier and this is true when you are uh, when uh, <clears throat> the aroused vaginal canal becomes smooth and slick, but as soon as that arousal goes away, it crumples back up, and when Basically, sperm is so tiny, it can hide in places where even Lysol can't reach. So if you do it immediately after, you had a good chance. But again, not, mm, mm, it's kind of, sort of a crapshoot. Help me. I'm proud of my knowledge on this. I spent a lot, way too much time reading this stuff. Because it's so cool. I'm sorry. Isn't it a little bit cool? I mean, Lysol is a spermicide? If they had to use code words because they can't just say it's a spermicide because it was illegal because of the Comstock Act. And the guy Comstock, he wasn't even a preacher or a cop or nothing. He was just a guy who didn't like sex. So he got it practically outlawed. God bless America. <laughs> Until Singer came. He died. He died in 1915 um, with his laws still in the book. And she opened... She started a small organization in 1916 called Planned Parenthood. So he won the battle, she won the war. Or actually we won the war because we still all have our uteruses inside us. Or if we had them out, it was voluntary. Uh, so uh, I uh, should stop talking. Can you edit this down so I look really smart? Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I will sign books if you want. They are not cheap, but they're gorgeous and make great gifts. And um, and you can also look at, uh, at Courtney's tattoos as you come. Oh, I have, and this is free. I, I try to be romantic. I have chocolate Rose City tea, um, hand hand tossed and loose. And vanilla scented candles. Your assistant has her time to shine. Yes, this is that, everyone. This is my uh, daughter Ellie. Um, 
uh, a whole, any other kid, it would be inappropriate to always bring. Hi, I'm Teresa O'Neill. I wrote a book. College for a special... It's not poetry night because they're reading novels. Are you okay? It's, bi it's based on... Um, uh, Very literally. A special... What do you want from me? It's not poetry night because they're reading novels. Some papers? They cost extra hundreds of thousands of dollars, so you'd buy it. Beautiful. Um, but, you know, my boys are good, too. I got it. <laughs> what do you want from me? Very literally. Uh, uh, you're welcome. And... It's okay, I'm not one of those people to get bent out of shape if there's a cell phone going on. But if you do answer it, I do reserve the right to shout penis really loud. Over and over and over again. So I, I, I can, we can wait. Alright, okay, now, hi, um, my name is Teresa. Um, you were going to throw me off, cousin. Um, I just found Long Lost Family today. Uh, but that's not why we're here. We're here about the vaginas. So let's get into that. Um, I wrote this book, I mentioned of all the Victorian Ladies' Guide to Sex, Marriage, and Manners. My boys are good, too. I got it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Sorry, I like this one. Hi, I'm Courtney Terry from the McCarnival Public Library. Thank you for joining us tonight for our library after dark with... Let's go. I'm Teresa O'Neill and I wrote a book. What do you want from me? And literary, literary. Oh, I said it wrong! And literary, literary. Oh, Liam. Oh, literary, literary. Oh, Liam. Aluminum. 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 That throws me off every time. Oh, dang. Fun, fecundating secretion. That's hot. And it. And, and so, ah, I'm sorry. They're very sturdy now, so I'll show you how sturdy my book is. That throws me off every time. Oh, thanks. writer, I make words, I make a living with words. Um, we have unmentionable the Victorian Ladies Guide to Sex, Marriage, and Manners available at the library, or you can go to your local Third Street bookstore and purchase a copy of your very own. For a few of those, and again, these are the positions that will make Jesus cry, and um, make your womb fall out. The details are too disgusting. I was like, no, I, I loved her face. So it's like, uh, are you, are you sure? <laughs> I, I don't want to, I don't want to go against you, but are you, are you sure? <laughs> 